Hello friends and welcome back to my homestead. Today we're in a kitchen and we're gonna make a very special dish involving these big guys. Little overgrown zucchinis, huh? So again, I know there's just so many of them and they grow so fast and I miss them. I think I'm gonna go pick him later on tonight and then I don't and I go back tomorrow and they're giants. So what do we do? We don't throw them away? No, no, no. I'm gonna make this wonderful dish that we can eat today, tomorrow, next few days, but also we can store away for the winter. We can can it for the winter because what's my motto? When we in abundance today, store away for tomorrow. So what I'm gonna make is called zucchini ikra. In translation, ikra is caviar in my language. It's so delicious and so wonderful, just like caviar, but no fish eggs involved, so don't stress. It's just a name because that's how delicious and unusual it is. So it is a zucchini spread that can be served with your protein on, on top of a sandwich, can be used as a dip with vegetables, with chips, you name it. It's one of the first things that we serve on our table when we're waiting for the food to be ready. So it's like an appetizer type of thing. It is wonderful. So let me show you how I'm gonna make it. Ready? Okay, let me show you what goes into the zucchini ikra, zucchini spread. Well, obviously this is the star of the show. I wash them and I trim the ends uh, and I have six pounds of zucchini. Um, again, I'm making a big batch because I wanna eat some now and I wanna store some for the winter, but you don't have to use this much, but this is my recipe, so it calls for six pounds of zucchini. Then we have carrots, washed and already peeled, and I have, a pound and a half of zucchini, of, excuse me, of carrot, a pound and a half of uh, onion, and I just grabbed one pepper, it's um, a spicy pepper. You don't have to take uh, this pepper, there's just we like a little little zinc to it, but you don't have to include it, it's, it's an optional one. So, but carrots, a uh, pound and a half, and onion, pound and a half is a must. Then we're gonna need one cup of tomato paste. And the reason why we use tomato paste and not tomato sauce, because this spread has to have substance. It's not one of those runny ones. It has to have substance. So this is a cup, but as you can tell, I'm very generous on my cup. But yes, one cup of tomato paste. Then we're gonna need garlic. And I have 10 cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of um, paprika. We're gonna use two tablespoons and kind of generous two tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, a large teaspoon, again very generous teaspoon of fresh black pepper. This whole thing will require a cup of oil. I know it sounds like a lot but remember I'm making a gigantic batch one cup of oil and this is five percent um, vinegar and we're gonna need half a cup half a cup of vinegar okay so what do we do next all my ingredients I push aside because the next step is I have to shred my vegetables and how you shred them is up to you uh, you can chop them up into small pieces but my kids gifted me this little machine let me show you what it looks like so I wanna, I wanna take it on its maiden voyage today. And I wanna use this. So basically it's like a chopper. So that's what I wanna try to use. Because I think it will be faster if I just...
Okay, so I have this gigantic cast iron pot to make my ikra. It has a thick bottom, it's gonna cook evenly, and it has a big open top where it will evaporate uh, a lot of unneeded steam. So as soon as it warms up, and it takes a while for the cast iron to warm up, I'm gonna be pouring my oil, and then I'm gonna start sauteing. I'm gonna start sauteing with carrots because carrots are a hard root vegetable and it takes the longest to cook. So this has been cooking all together for probably five, maybe six minutes. And the onion are becoming a little bit more translucent and much softer. So at this point, I'm gonna be adding my shredded zucchinis. And uh, also in a corner here, I have my cut up um, spicy uh, pepper. So I'm gonna be dumping it all in here again. I am doing this in such a large pot because I'm making a big batch. Now, however, you can uh, make a smaller version of this. And if you do not have uh, a large kind of pot like mine, you can always cook in three separate pots, you know, divide them uh, up sort of thing, and then just combine later on at the end in a... Okay, so now it seems like everything is nicely combined. And I'm just going to be stirring this probably every 10 minutes. I'm going to put my heat on lower. Like probably middle. And guess what? This is now going to cook all together on low heat, continuing to kind of saute and stew together on a low heat for one hour. For one hour. So I'm, I'm going to put a cover on and I'm gonna keep stirring it every 10 minutes to make sure everything is cooking nicely and evenly. And I'm gonna cook this for one hour. Okay, so the hour of stewing has passed and I am stirring this one more time because at this point I'm going to be adding my tomato paste. Now I didn't put tomato paste earlier because I know the tomato paste often burns to the bottom and I would like to avoid that. So I'm going to be putting my cup of tomato paste and I'm going to stir it very well. Also at this time I'm going to prepare garlic and all the other spices. You know, when um, I was getting dressed today and I put on my, my mama's apron, you know, some people inherit from their parents diamonds, gold, fur coats, you know, real, real estate and houses. Well, I didn't inherit any of that from my mama. Instead, I inherited her apron that is super old, super antique, and is super faded and it's falling apart, but every time I put it on, I think of her. And I have inherited the love for cooking, for my family. I have inherited the love of preserving food, love for gardening, love for caring for animals, basically for homesteading. That came from my mama. All right, so I have put in my tomato paste and I'm going to turn it still on low. I'm going to cook this for the next 20 minutes and in the meanwhile I'm going to be putting all my other spices. So this is paprika, one tablespoon of paprika. Then I have about a teaspoon of black crushed uh, pepper. I'm going to put two tablespoons of salt. 
and actually I messed up. It's two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, and what else, what else? Oh, I need to crush the garlic. So back to my story. I'm crushing 10 cloves of garlic. So I inherited the love for homesteading from my mama and I also inherited her blessing. So talking about inheritance and blessing, I got a story for you. So a long, long time ago, in a land far, far away, there was this family that had twin boys. And those twin boys always competed, always fought. As a matter of fact, they started fighting still in the mama's womb. They, were, they could not get along even then. So those two boys were born and they were so different from each other. One of them, the oldest, the one who was oldest, loved to hunt and care for animals. So if any of you hunters, you know that there's a particular aroma when you deal with a lot of animal and animal blood and all of that. And then the youngest one who came right after the oldest, he was more of a homebody. He stayed home, he liked farming, he stayed around the house helping his mother. So needless to say, he was mama's favorite. So now according to the culture of that land, the oldest child, the oldest son I should say, I'm just gonna scoop everything in here, the oldest son would receive the blessing of inheritance and he would uh, inherit the land, the money, everything after father passes away. That means that the oldest would be in charge of the youngest and the youngest or the younger siblings would have to work for the oldest. Well, one day the hunter comes home completely exhausted, so tired, so hungry, and his younger brother just prepared a meal. And the oldest brother says, hey, can I have, can I have that dinner? I am so hungry. So I'm gonna put a timer on for 20 minutes and I'm gonna keep stirring this and cooking this for the next 20 minutes. Okay, so while my zucchini is stewing away, my ikra is stewing away, I need to prepare my jars. So I already washed my jars, but now I need to sterilize them. So what, how am I going to sterilize them? I have this pot of boiling water. Oh, it's hot. I have this pot of boiling water. And normally, this is a water bath canning pot. Normally, there's a, a metal rack that goes inside, but mine got rusty and I threw it away. So instead, I put a towel on the bottom so nothing breaks. And I'm going to be putting my jars in there slowly to sterilize. And they're going to sterilize for 10 minutes. All right, so anyway, back to my story. So the oldest brother comes home exhausted from hunting, probably was not a successful hunt. And he tell his younger brother, listen, I want your dinner that you just cooked. And as a matter of fact, I'm so hungry that I will give up my oldest son inheritance just for this dinner. And the youngest brother's like, heck yes, absolutely, let's do it. So basically, the oldest son sold his inheritance for a bowl of soup or whatever that was, maybe stew. Anyway, because it was so delicious and he was so hungry. Well, in the meanwhile, the mother heard the whole story. And she knew that the father was getting, at, in his age, he was getting old, he was already blind, and he's going to die soon. And he has to bless the oldest son with the blessing of inheritance. Now, remember how I said that the youngest son was her favorite? Well, she's like, listen, you know, I'm going to make this dinner. You go ahead, go see your dad, 
and uh, he because he wanted a special dinner for the last time like a last meal and he will like that dinner and he will bless you but you know the youngest son goes wait a second mom you know even though dad is blind he still can smell the fact that I'm not the oldest son who always smells like animals so they decided to put the oldest brother's clothes on him so he will smell like the animals and that's exactly what they did. All right, so I'm gonna cook this for a little bit more and I'll finish my story. Okay, so I sterilized my uh, jars for about 10 minutes and now I need to take them out. And I'll tell you the rest of the story. Okay, so, so the father says to the oldest son, okay, for my last meal, go out, hunt, bring me something best. Make me my favorite meal. But the mother heard that story and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make that favorite meal to the youngest son. And you'll wear the oldest brother's clothes that's gonna stink like animals. And your father will think it's him and he, uh, because he's blind. And he will bless you and give you the blessing of inheritance. And that's exactly what they did. Mom knew exactly what kind of food dad liked. She cooked it up. She dressed her favorite youngest son in the clothing of a stinky older brother. And off he goes to bring the dinner to his dad. And what do you know? The father touches him, smells him, and he goes, yup. You're my oldest son, and I give you the blessing of inheritance. Well, what do you know? The oldest son comes home, and he realizes that he just lost the blessing of inheritance. It went to his youngest brother. Well, I'll just tell you one thing. There was some commotion going on, some commotion, and the youngest brother had to flee really, really fast because the oldest brother was going to kill him. And that is the story about Isaac and Esau. That's how Isaac got the blessing that was meant for his older twin brother, Esau. So, what's the moral of the story? Even though we do sneaky things sometimes and we do very dishonest things. My parents still love us and they still bless us. I got the blessing not because I was a sneaky youngest child of my family because I was a baby number six. But my parents still blessed me and I am a blessed person today. Okay, so um, 20 minutes passed. The cooking time is done. At this point, I am going to puree everything. Okay, because to make it all even spread, I'm going to be using a, um, I don't know how you call this, uh, and I'm going to pulverize everything. Okay, so everything is now nice and smooth. Uh, if you see little green specks, that's okay because that's the skin of the zucchini, that which is totally fine. At this point, I'm going to turn the heat back on and I'm going to put it on low because it's going to start bubbling pretty quickly. And guess what? This is the last time I'm turning the heat on because at this point, the last ingredient that goes in is vinegar. Last ingredient is vinegar. So. I'm going to stir it all up. As soon as it comes to boil, I'm going to let it boil very gently for 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes have passed and ikra is ready to be jarred. So I have everything sterilized, all my coverings, everything is ready. I have a little um, moist cloth ready to wipe the rings and let's start filling up the jars. You ready?
and 15 minutes have passed, the timer went off, and it's time to take them out of the canner. All right, I do need a, something to hold them with because they're gonna be hot. Yes, these jars will be ready for storage once they cool off. Well, look at these beauties. Aren't they nice? Pretty soon I'm gonna start hearing popping sound. They, just like that! Did you hear it? Ah, oh, it's like music to my ears. That means that jar has sealed. And you're gonna start hearing pop, 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 pop throughout all of them. That means the jar has sealed and they're ready for storage. Okay, friends, I hope you have enjoyed learning how to make zucchini ikra. It's something new, something unusual. And I already tasted some. It is absolutely delicious. It's so good. It's so good. No wonder it's called ikra, caviar. So, I hope you guys are encouraged and try something new.